Hello and welcome to HealthyHouseplants.com where we teach you all about gardening in the great indoors. Today's video is sponsored by our Amazon affiliate link which you'll see in the comment section below. Today I'm going to talk about pumice and I want to talk a little bit about uh, pumice as opposed to perlite which is commonly used, why I prefer pumice and um, how well it helps with drainage, which is critical. So pumice is an igneous volcanic rock. Uh, there, it, there's a, quite a bit of it in the Pacific Northwest and it is a very hard. So it's a hard, you can see here, it's a hard um, rock. So let me show you close up here. And it's a, it's a very, hard rock so if I push on it like this and try to squish it it's not it doesn't squish it's still intact as opposed to perlite which is very commonly used people get a little bit confused because perlite is also um, the same color it looks the same it generally tends to be smaller and the big difference with perlite I'm going to show you right now is that you can squish it so this so you'll be able to tell you can squish it very easily into a fine powder now why is that of significance the reason it's of significance is over time and not too much time it breaks down in your soil and what you want in your soil is good drainage good drainage promotes healthy roots healthy roots promote healthy plants house plants uh, it's of particular importance to watch your drainage in your house plants because outdoors a lot of things go on and there's a lot more things going on in the soil that promote good drainage. For instance, worms. Worms outdoors tunnel through soil and continually create really good drainage for plants, but indoors you may have a few worms if you use worm compost, which I discuss in my other video on worm compost, but generally not or not that many to do this. So it's really up to you to create that good drainage for your house plants. Uh, without good drainage, you're going to have root rot and I have a whole series on getting rid of root rot if that's occurred, but those thick, heavy soils what they do, what happens to the roots when you, have, when you have that going on without that drainage in there is that the roots suffocate. So it's, it's interesting because you think, well, we're covering up the roots with the soil so that the, the roots don't dry out because the roots need to be covered up. Yes, that's true. And they need to be kept moist. But at the same time, the roots do need oxygen. So you need oxygen in the soil as well. And the oxygen is not large amounts of oxygen like you would if you were exposed the roots to the air, but it is small amounts of oxygen so that the roots can grow uh, healthy and they can um, cycle water and nutrients to the plant, to the upper part of the plant. So the pumice, as I mentioned, is larger and it is also, as I said, um, it's also harder. So another really great thing about it is that it will not come up to the soil when you're watering because that's very common also with the perlite it will eventually because it's so lightweight if it's not going to break down it will come up to the top of the soil and you'll find that there's less at the bottom where more of the roots are where you really want to keep the drainage going so it's a heavier denser uh, product that will weigh that will uh, s stay down in the in in the soil and really just keep the roots um, nice and nice and healthy. I also really like to use pumice outdoors. So if you do outdoor gardening, uh, it's a great amendment when you're planting trees because it's generally not good to put a bunch of amendments like a bunch of, of mulch or, or it's okay to put some compost but not a bunch of compost because uh, and mulch and that sort of thing because what happens is they break down and then the soil goes back to being very compacted. So if you were trying to loosen the soil, you're gonna eventually end up where you started. But the pumice is inert, it's not going, it doesn't go anywhere, it just stays there. So that's another really good use for it. So anyway, I do, um, you can find it online. I do carry it on 
healthyhouseplants.com on my store as well. And I do encourage you for whatever you do to please work on getting your drainage good for your plants so that you have really healthy plants. Mentioned a, a couple things. Now, sand is often suggested for creating good drainage as is vermiculite. Well, vermiculite is good for holding water in the soil. So don't use that to create drainage. And sand can work, but in certain circumstances, it can work with some succulents, but you have to be very careful to not use too much sand. And for most houseplants, it's not, it is not a good, it's not a good addition as a, as a, a to create drainage. Also, you always, if you are going to ever use sand, always use horticultural sand. Never sand from the beach that's very high in salt. The salts will kill your plants or stunt their growth. Uh, I talk about that in another video about the, the um, how to uh, get rid of salinity in your houseplant soil. So just want to bring up those other two um, things. And there are also lava rock is sometimes used. Um, bark chips are used, but those are more commonly used for air plants, <clears throat> for plants that <clears throat> normally in their native habitat would grow in the air, such as orchids. So the Phalaenopsis, which is the moth orchid, you would use that for that, but you wouldn't use that for your standard house plants, such as arrowhead vine, pothos, African violet, croton, and etc. So covering that for you. All right, well, I think that is about it for pumice. Obviously, I'm a big fan, and I wish you luck creating drainage for your houseplants. I will be leaving a link in the description where you can purchase my pumice in my store. Thank you for stopping by today. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video and let me know if there's any other indoor gardening tutorials you'd like to see.